Marketplace, right. Thanks, Fabian. Okay, on the one hand, you got Barbie comics, and on the other hand, you have things like... Help me out here, Nancy. Oh, okay, the books of magic. Perfect. DC Comics has a number of magical characters who live in the same comic world. Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld, Zatara, the Demon, John Constantine, Mr. E, the Phantom Stranger. Now, Neil Gaiman has combined these comic characters with characters from the real world of magic. I mean, traditional magic, you know, folklore and myths from around the world. Neil has woven all these legends together in an epic that's called The Books of Magic. My editor at DC, Karen Berger, a wonderful woman, thought by many people to be an angel in disguise, although not by me. Um, she rang me up one day. She said, hi, Neil. And I said, hi, Karen. I'll just skip ahead to the part about the story here. And we'll probably call it something like The Books of Magic. I said, no, that's a terrible title. No, it's just the title. It, it's a big work, though, huge, epic thing. Uh, I said, you must be out of your mind. Don't be silly. Go away. That's just the go away part. It's here somewhere. It's, it's only an hour tape. I'll find it. Just... Each one painted by a different artist. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Uh, the first one with John Bolton is called The Invisible Labyrinth. And it's the story of the meeting of, of Timothy Hunter, who is a 12-year-old boy who has the potential to be the greatest magician the world has ever seen, if that's what he chooses to do. And four of DC's... Um, mysterious men in trench coats undertake to show him, to, to inform him, to enlighten him, to at least give him the information to make up his mind about whether what he wants is magic or not. In the first book, they meet him, and the Phantom Stranger takes him through the past. He takes him to Atlantis, he introduces him to Merlin. Um, he, he just gets to see the past of the DC Universe and the way that magic has been in the past, from the fall of the angels on down. And the second book is called The Shadow World. And in it, John Constantine takes the kid to America. And the fact that they're in terrible danger the entire time is practically, you know, go, goes almost without saying. Um, people are forever trying to kill them and, and, and missing appallingly, you know, or getting, getting sort of run off cliffs or turned to stone or whatever because they keep trying to kill these people who practically don't notice because they're off in their own little you know, travels around America and the shadow world. And it's like... Anyway, you get the idea. It sounds great. It's like Bob Hope I'll just stop it. Movie. The no, point is... That... Road movies. No. It's stop very, it. Very shut it. What the heck is the matter here? Um, it's very Nancy, can you shut this off, please? Oh. Anyway, the point is comic books are no longer just cute kitty cartoons. For that matter, cartoons are no longer just for kitties. There are animated cartoons being made for adults. I don't, I don't just mean suitable for all ages. I mean cartoons for adults. Marv Newland has a new animated movie called Pink Calm Calmer. It's a, a sexy sequel to his earlier film, Anagen. I made a picture uh, back in 84 called Anagen.